How's it going everybody? So for this video I actually want to do something a little bit educational and that's talk to you about glassware for beers. Um, not only do I want to show you the different types and what kind of beers go with them, but also explain the importance of why you should use a glass rather than drinking a beer just straight out of the bottle. Now the reason why you want to use a glass for almost all beers is because a lot of beers, you know, aren't filtered. Um, we're used to with standard domestic beers, you pour them um, and they're just a clear, easy to see through liquid. A lot of beers have little bits of um, yeast and other little nuggets, as I like to call them, floating around in the beer and or, or in yeast deposits that can settle at the bottom of the bottle. Um, these are there because a lot of these bigger craft beers are bottle conditioning and bottle re-fermenting where they continue to ferment and age in the bottle. Um, it may not be the most pleasing thing to look at, but when you see a beer like that, you know it's probably going to be very flavorful um, and of a very high caliber as far as the quality is concerned. Another reason is because you can't really do a beer justice if you can't get your nose in the glass because taste is two parts. Taste is taste and smell. Smell is half of the work as far as taste goes. If you have your nose in the glass whenever you're swallowing, you're going to get many more flavors um, at a higher intensity than what you're going to get if you just drink it straight out of the bottle. And um, finally, a lot of the beers don't have the ability to form a good head on them if you leave them in the bottle. Um, if they're in the bottle, you're not going to know what the head's like. A lot of the aromas aren't going to be released because it's not out in the open. Basically, you just kind of shut the whole experience down when you're drinking it out of a bottle. So you may be asking yourself, well, what kind of glass is proper for what kind of beer? Well, you're going to have a lot of beer snobs out there who demand that this type of beer go in this type of glass. Some people even buy breweries specific glasses. Um, it gets very convoluted and confusing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give you a sensible explanation of beer glasses. Some people are probably going to disagree with me, but this is personally what I think you should have on hand to kind of cover the spectrum of all types of beers. Let's get started. This is what I would call your standard Pilsner lager pint glass. Um, very basic standard design on it. Um, this is what I would serve any kind of beer in that's not too terribly crazy. A pale ale, a Pilsner, um, maybe some wheat beers, some some lighter lagers, things like that. Um, basically just for a, a real standard basic kind of beer is what I would serve it in. It's just this kind of standard pint glass here. Next on the list is what a lot of people are calling um, an amber pint glass. And notice that the difference is that it's smaller at the bottom and it kind of widens out at the top. Um, why is this? I really couldn't tell you. This came in a 12 pack of glasses that I purchased, but it said this is for amber <laughs> amber beers. I couldn't tell you what the difference would be. Um, I mean, I guess as far as the colors go, it looks nicer in this glass if it's an amber beer. Um, but this is one of those things where you get people get really picky. So this is, if you see one of these, supposedly this is what you serve amber beers in. You could probably get away with putting it into any kind of pint glass, really. But amber glass. Moving right along. This is a stout glass or a stout pint glass. Um, now a lot of, you know, once again, a lot of beer places say serve it in like a bulbed or um, a wide brimmed um, pint glass, but a lot of places you see call these stout glasses and they say it's because the bulb here helps keep the head afloat and um, kind of gives it an area to, to rest upon this bulb here. Is it a little bit picky and pretentious? Yes, but this is kind of that standard shape of glass. You kind of imagine um, a stout being served to you in Ireland in, and uh, they do look pretty nice when they're in a glass like this, but um, what would I call it? Would I call it a stout glass? I guess so. Um, it's really just a flared pint glass. But anyway, that's kind of your three basic glasses. But now we're going to move into some something more advanced. So you probably see a lot of beers and sports bars and the like served in these really narrow, tall glasses. These are called Wiesen glasses, and that is, I believe, German for wheat. Now, this is what you'll be told you should serve your um, your wheat beers in the German like Wiesen or uh, Wiesen beer in, I believe, as it's worded, and. Um, once again, the reason being for that 
I couldn't tell you why. I think it's really probably just a cultural thing, although they are kind of uh, interesting to look at when they're full of beer because you, it looks like you have a lot more beer since the glass is so tall, but this holds just as much as one of those previous pint glasses does. Um, but it gives you a little bit more room for head, so that's pretty nice. Um, but this is a Wiesen glass. I'd say you could probably serve pale ales and pilsners out of this too. I don't see why not. Okay, now we're going to move into the final three glasses that I've got that are much more specialized. <laughs> this is the Chimay Beer Chalice. Um, this is mostly used to serve Belgian beers such as doubles, triples, and quadruples or quads, um, Abbey beers such as um, Abbey Ales, um, obviously since it says Chimay on the front. Uh, once again, do you think there's a point to this? I don't know. I think because if you're drinking that type of beer, it's kind of a um, sophisticated, luxurious thing, and this glass sort of conveys that with its gold-rimmed, uh, gold-plated little rim here, um, the short little goblet-style look of it. Once again, it's not that special. Uh, it's really just an oversized wine glass or a goblet really is what I would call this, but this is known as a beer chalice. Um, one thing it does have though that I'll point out, if you see down there in the bottom of the glass, it has an etching. That is something that's actually important. It's not just a beer brewery's way of putting their logo on the glass. This etching helps with the bubbles streaming up to the top of the glass, which in turn helps with head potential and head retention. Um, how does it work? I'm not exactly sure, but I have noticed whenever I pour a beer into a glass that has these little etchings in the bottom like this, you just see this huge concentration of very thick bubble streams just rising from that little etching to the top and, the, and it lasts for a very long time. Um, so that's something important to look for in, in your beer glasses. If you stick your finger down there and feel it, you can actually feel it's quite rough. Um, so keep your eye out for that. Um, but other than that, this is just really um, a fancy beer glass to look at. Now for the final two. These are something that um, I actually recommend that you have. This is um, a Duvel glass. You, of course, you don't have to have it from that brewery. But this is probably my absolute most used glass. This can be called a tulip glass. Um, this can be called a snifter. The reason for that being is that the design of this displays the aroma of beers very properly. This is used for the big bowl at the bottom to capture and hold the beer, and it usually ends right about here. Then the top half of this glass concaves inwards, which brings all the aromas to the nose much more efficiently. Now you may think that's being a little bit picky, but trust me, you will notice a huge difference using this than a straight-sided glass. Also, this is um, used by Duvel and other beers that have massive head potential in that no matter how easy you pour them, they're gonna just foam up with a huge head. This would probably hold two pints, actually. So you have this whole upper portion here to hold a very large head in. Um, it's a really well-made glass. I think every beer drinker should have one. What do I use this for? I use this glass for a lot of triples, doubles, quads, beers that are going to have very large aromas. I also use this for big beers, beers that have a high ABV, tend to have a lot more interesting aromas. And I also use this for stouts. I think stouts is what I use this for more than anything. And that's because it just looks so good in the glass and it displays the aromas. This glass is really all about the room for head and the aroma display. Um, so on this one, yes, highly recommend it. Once again, it has the little etching in the bottom. That's how you know you've got a pretty good glass. Um, so yes to a snifter or a tulip glass. Um, you should definitely get one. And now we're going to move to something that's fairly new in the craft beer world. This is an IPA glass. Now, as you see, this has Dogfish Head's logo on it. You can find these branded with Dogfish Head's logo or Sierra Nevada. Originally, those two kind of came up with and patented these from what I had read in an article. Um, you'll now find glasses that are very similar to this um, on a lot of beer websites, and they'll claim it's a stout glass, a Pilsner glass, yada, yada, yada. Originally, this was designed and used as an IPA glass. The reasons for that are... This is made of incredibly thin 
glass. And that is because when you have a thick glass, it absorbs the coldness of the beer a lot quicker, which means your beer warms up quicker, which is great if you're drinking a stout or something you want to drink a little bit warmer. But with an IPA, you usually want to drink those ice cold because as they warm up, the breadiness and alcohol starts to come out and it's not good for an IPA normally. Um, that's the first reason. Second reason, it has the etching in the bottom. And I think that's the most important for an IPA more than any other type of beer is that constant streaming of bubbles upwards. Um, now you're probably wondering why is the handle part of it? And the reason being for this and the reason it's also ribbed is when you tilt this beer to drink it, or when you tilt this glass to drink it, the beer runs over these ridges and by the time it makes it out it creates a swirling effect which basically does the same thing that swirling the beer around in your hand does. It starts to release more aromas, builds the head back up, agitates the beer. This does it for you every single time you take a sip. So between it keeping the beer colder for longer, constant streaming bubbles to keep the head retention and head potential high, and the fact that it keeps it swirling every time you drink it, I think it's actually worth it. Some people kind of uh, scoff at this saying, oh, it's just a fancy looking glass, but it's a waste of time to buy one. I don't think so. I think if you're big on IPAs, it's definitely worth having one. So what should you take from this lesson? You should take that you should probably have an IPA glass, definitely have a snifter glass, and then just have something to serve all the other beers that don't fall into these two categories in. And truthfully, for all the glasses that I've reviewed here, being this pint glass, this Wiesen glass, this pint glass, and this here uh, Chimay chalice, they're all very similar. Um, most of these aren't going to do many things different. Now, you may argue and say that this one, since it has the etching in the bottom wheel, and since this one has the bulb, it'll help with the head. And, you know, I can agree with that, but for the most part, I think it's getting a little bit picky. So I say have a good pint glass of your choosing, and then have an IPA glass and a tulip glass. The rest is all just to personal preference. And that's not to say it's a bad thing to have a big variety of glasses. You know, variety is the spice of life. And um, to be fair, the beer, or the glass that was designed for the type of beer, while once again it may be being a little bit picky, it does look damn good when you have it in the proper glass. And at really high-end bars, you'll see them doing this. But anyway, I hope you guys learned a little something about glassware. And uh, tune in for my next beer review.